welcome to Studio Scoops. Like always, we have interesting contributors contributing to making our podcast very, very interesting. And Epic War is one of our leading podcasts. And we have Mandar. Hi, Mandar. How are you? Hi, Priyanka. Always a pleasure to be talking to you on Epic Wars and revisiting the history of India one battle at a time. These battles give me goosebumps, you know, and you make them so interesting, Mandar, for all our listeners. And today we are discussing the third battle of Panipat, right? And Yes, yes, yes. Yes, talking about battles always gives me like a thrill, a sense of excitement. And when we together are revisiting those battles, it's about, it's as if, you know, you're still, you're, you're right there in front of those armies witnessing what happened. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Let's talk about the third battle of Panipat. Mandar, uh, like the premise of the battle is very interesting. It was fought over two years. You, you've really, really covered it very well in the podcast too. But if you have to quickly... Snack it up for all our YouTube viewers here at Studio School. What sure. exactly happens here? You know, like quick takeaways. Absolutely. And we for that, especially for our listeners, viewers for YouTube, we have snacked it down to five points about the Battle of Panipat, the third Battle of Panipat, which will tell you all about why it happened, what happened, and what was the outcome of the third Battle of Panipat, the bloodiest war fought on the Indian soil in the last 500 years. So beginning, there were a lot of interesting characters involved in this battle, right? And there was a lot happening, which lead, like these, these were like movie, movies have been made on this battle. So there was a lot. Indeed. So who were those main characters? So, okay. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen uh, the movie Panipat. So I can also draw parallels from that. So Sadashi Rao Bhau, that was the commander-in-chief of the Peshwa, the Maratha army. So if you've seen the movie, that is Arjun Kapoor, who was character play kar rahe the. Then the premium antagonist was Sanjay Dutt in that movie. He plays Ahmed Shah Abdali. Ahmed Shah Abdali is the Afghan emperor who was covering the northwestern portion of India and wanted to come on this side. Hmm. Then... There is Vishwas Rao, which is the prince of the Peshwas, who was accompanying along with Sadashiv Rao Bhau mm. to fight the all-important third battle of Panipat. Mm. Then, the most important character, according to me, is Najibud Dola. Uh, Najibud Dola ko Panipat film mein itna importance nahi gaya, diya gaya hai. But if you read history, more and more insights come out that Najibud Dola was actually the man who orchestrated the, or rather he was the architect of the third battle of Panipat. So, Mandal, there was a very interesting uh, economics of war that you spoke in the podcast about. What was all that? Yes, indeed. Uh, I think so. And that is, in fact, Priyanka, our first point. The economics of war, that is the most distinguishing aspect of the third battle of Panipat. Hmm. But, uh, of course, like I say, there are three T's, which is tactics, technology, and teamwork, which eventually leads to the outcome of war. But this particular war talks a lot, or rather gives a lot of insight on what goes into the resource management mm -hmm. and the management of resources itself in order to win a war. And hence, the economics of war. When I say economics of war, here is the army of Ahmed Shah Abdali. So, Sadashiv Rao Bhau, apni 1,20,000 strong army, Pune se leke chale. It's not just 1,20,000 people and the camp followers. It is 50,000 horses, more than 20,000 bullocks, 2,000 camels, uh, 300 elephants. When they are moving on 7th of March, 1761, mm -hmm. The plan is to wrap up the battle in three months' time yeah. and come back victorious. But this was the 7th March, 1760. And war was 14 January, 1761. Oh my God, it took them more than... Nine months on the road. Can you imagine the toll it would have taken on the resources? 
Okay. Sadashi Rao Bhau was the, you can call him the chief financial officer of the Peshwa army, the Marathas. Mm -hmm. Very great man, brilliant tactician, a lot of foresight, a great visionary. What he had realized that tum war jeete ho, territory jeet ke lai ho, technically your treasure coffers should be filled up, right? Yeah, yeah. It actually happened that when he returned, Raghoba returned in 1758 after winning Etok, which is right near Peshawar. Hmm. He had actually incurred a significant debt on the treasury of the Peshwas. Okay. And he brought it out in front of the whole Sabha hmm. that something's wrong. The Choth, the tax which is promised is not coming through. Plus, you are not managing your resources in the right way in order to go and bring back the wealth to the treasury. Mm. This is what exactly triggered the whole thing. So you can. So he was a battle-hardened, disciplined commander-in-chief who led them on the war, but realized the pitfalls of managing what is just out of sorts. Yeah. I mean, in the army, there were 30,000 people, the pilgrims and other people who were tagging along. So that do they can do a Tirth Yatra at Kurukshetra, later at Kashi, feeding 30,000 extra people yeah. for a war which was meant for three months is still okay. But the, the war, the battle stretched for nine months. Wow. Imagine <laughs> the stress yes. <laughs> that would have put on the resources of these people. Yeah, yeah. Three salary. If you have nine months, then you have to go. Yeah, that's right. In that time is as much as a big town you're <laughs> carrying along with yourself in order to fight a war. Najibuddola Khan and Najibuddola is the Peter Bellish of Game of Thrones. A man who came from nowhere, managed to get an important position. He was of Afghan origin. Or Afghan origin ka vasta dete hue, mm. wo aage bade, and then eventually he ended up inviting Amacha Abdali, ke bhai, Islam khatre mein hai, aap aye, and help us decimate the Maratha power in India. So, yes, for me, if you ask me, the arch rival, the arch enemy in the third battle of Panipat is actually Najibud Dola oh. and not Amacha Abdali. Wow, tables have turned here, Mandar. Very interesting. So when Marathas drew themselves into the politics of Delhi in 1752, there was the Ahmadiyya Pact. Okay. Marathas had captured Delhi. And in exchange of a tax, a choth, they were supposed to protect the empire. And when the Marathas realized that this guy is neither paying tax mm. and not even uttering our uh, commands, they decided to decimate Najibud Dola. That is when Najibud Dola sends for help hmm. to Afghan warlord, the king of Afghanistan, king of Afghanistan, Ahmad Shah Abdali. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kar, Abdali Shah Abdali ko gaya. Shah Abdali, who was a very ardent Muslim, mm -hmm. who always wanted to fight, fight for a cause, mm -hmm. responded to the call and made his move along with his army, crossed over to this side. Mm -hmm. And the war, which technically lasted almost two years, started in 1759. Oh. You know, the, the significance of geography is very important because there's an army which was marching from Pune. There's, a, there's an army which is coming from Afghan and then they all convene at Panipat right but it doesn't really happen like that you know it's when you say main characters i would say yamuna river as one of the main characters in the battle of panipat mm -hmm. because that decisively influenced the outcome of this war jab maine kaha ke 3 mahine mein ye battle khatam hone wala tha lekin because of the economics of war and the 1 lakh 20000 regiment that he was carrying along with himself sadashiv rao bhau could reach yamuna only when the monsoon started pouring which meant the Yamuna was flowing above the danger mark. If it was before, Sadashiv Rao Bhav could have easily crossed over Yamuna to the other side, which is Shujaudola's territory. Mm -hmm. And the war would have happened, not in Panipat, but somewhere in the uh, Gangetic Plain. Mm -hmm. 
the yamuna also played a decisive role later on during the battle of panipat where mm-hmm. both armies were stationed against each other lekin like again they could not do anything they were face to face lekin like yamuna beech mein beh rahi thi na bhau is side cross kar sakta hai na abdali is side cross kar sakta hai mm-hmm. and they were dependent on the yamuna for water and everything i much the abdali eventually managed to blow with his cannon a canal which was passing through panipat which was feeding water whole army of sadashiv rao bhau so again mm-hmm. what amacha abdali did was he diverted the course of the canal hence the maratha army did not even have water later on ur ke to vande the hi us time pe food amacha abdali had cut off all the supplies yamuna was a natural deterrent कुछ नहीं तो आदमी पानी पे तो जिंदा रह सकता है लेकिन इन्होंने पानी का सप्लाई भी काट दिया सो द डांस ऑफ यमुना प्लेज अ वेरी क्रिटिकल रोल थ्रू आउट द कोर्स ऑफ द वॉर व्हिच लास्टेड फॉर सच लॉन्ग टाइम एंड इवन पानीपत इज नॉट कंसीडर्ड अ डिफेंडर्स फोर्ट यू नो ओह यस दैट ब्रिंग्स मी टू द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट प्रियंका यस दैट्स वेरी वेल पुट सो फॉर द लिसनर्स हमने फर्स्ट बैटल ऑफ पानीपत के बारे में भी बात की है दिस इज द थर्ड बैटल ऑफ पानीपत ट्रेडिशनली अगर आप देखोगे हिस्ट्री को खोल के तो पानीपत हैज नेवर बीन काइंड टू द डिफेंडर्स पहला बैटल ऑफ पानीपत वाज इब्राहिम लोदी वर्सेस बाबर हमने फर्स्ट बैटल ऑफ पानीपत कवर किया है इन द फर्स्ट एपिसोड इफ यू नॉट ऑलरेडी लिसन टू इट यू कैन चेक आउट आवर पॉडकास्ट एंड figure out the fantastic battle that laid mm. the foundation of uh, the mogul empire in india so us time baby babar was the invader yeah ibrahim lodi was the king of hindustan at that point in time but ibrahim lodi loses the second battle of panipat is between a young akbar who is trying to reclaim his throne from king himu mm-hmm. again akbar manages mm. to snatch a victory out of the defeats of jaw mm-hmm. panipat ka defender himu loses the third battle of panipat mm-hmm. the marathas are trying to protect trying to defend the whole of hindustan against the afghan invaders mm-hmm. so who is the defender in this case is the marathas and the allied powers mm-hmm. who are taking on amit shah abdali and that results into the crushing defeat of marathas in the mm. third battle of panipat so yes the third important point panipat traditionally has never been favorable for the one who is defending it oh sad but yeah this also says a lot what happens in the war vanda thank you so much you've been amazingly informative about this episode and i want all our listeners of studio scoops to tune in to epic wars on spotify on google play on all the leading platforms we are available now and we've covered so many interesting wars not just panipat and there is there's so much to learn from our history so we want everyone to tune in and especially the third battle of panipat is epic and it has it's all ingredients to be called as an epic war yeah. thank you very much for listening thank you very much priyanka for having me here thank you mandar and guys subscribe to studio scoops and we will not disappoint you we have a lot of food for thought in our history to cover and so looking forward to listening please share your comments once you listen to our podcast or even for what you heard what if things were different you know what is your version you know what do you want us to cover ahead also let us know and we would love to hear you guys give us some interesting comments here thank you thank you so much <laughs>